next episode of the Waifu Wars podcast. I am Damien's Doki Doki filter whenever he sees Anya, Drividu. And I am that great schooler who realized he wants to be dominated by Anya, Silveroni. I. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, it's like don't a, co- it's a copping. It's a copping for me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, welcome <laughs> to the next episode of the Life of Wars podcast where we talk about all things anime the good, the bad, and the weeb. But not your waifu, cause she ain't shit. Oh. What's up, Bonnie? Um, I'm doing good. How are you doing? <sighs> I'm. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't want to say I'm tired, but I'm a little less tired now that we're starting the podcast. I'm a, I'm a lot less tired. There's there's <laughs> there's some <laughs> things I'm excited to talk about, and bitch, it's late at night so without any further ado let's get right into it starting off with our new segment this week in anime 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 um so this is not (laughs) this actually has nothing to do with anime but it was on anime news network and i was like oh because you know i like (laughs) i like you know oh i like being in the mess a little bit Mm -hmm. uh according to anime news network Power Rangers star Austin St. John, aka the Red Ranger, charged on suspicion of fraud related to COVID nineteen loans. Yikes. Um so basically him along with seventeen other people are charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Um mm. what happened is is that uh, do you remember that program that's like meant to help smaller businesses? Yeah. Um, it is. They are called the Small Business Administration's the Paycheck Protection Program, or the PPP. PPP. The PPP. Oh my god! We used to have. <laughs> oh, remind you of something in grade school. <laughs> wow. Very, very. <laughs> Very, very used to have a fun club called the PPP. <laughs> I feel like it has to be with little boys and peeing. No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I feel like it's something. I, I say thank God. I feel like it's something worse, isn't it? It is probably. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I mean, was it as bad <laughs> as committing wire fraud? We didn't commit wire fraud, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Maybe hope for y'all yet. Mm. Um... But yeah, so that's basically what happened. Apparently, they um, they apparently used that money on personal purchases, um, paid leaders of the scheme, or gave the funds to third party to invest in in them for exchange markets. Um, there's also something else. Oh yeah, they allegedly miss represented information on their applications such as the true nature of their business the number of employees and the amount of payroll so i'm like yeah it's kind of oof yeah kind of illegal ish <laughs> that's like oh, that's like a legal ish mm-hmm. just a bit um he pled not guilty he said basically the things that happened were done through third parties and He's just the victim of it. I hope that's the case. I don't want the Red Ranger going to jail. Like, chill. Yeah, I <laughs> like, I sure hope not. So, yeah. Uh, hope everything works out. Hope he is indeed not truly guilty. And things work out for him. Uh, and that, yeah, that's all my news. All right. Uh, I have two small pieces of news. Mm. Uh, let's hit y'all with the funny one first. So, uh, in honor of Kiss Day, which is apparently uh, May 23rd in Japan, it's uh, Kiss Day. It it commemorizes the um, first ever kiss in a Japanese movie that happened on May 23rd, 1946. So, you know, you figure like, oh, it was the first ever kiss scene on a movie, so maybe you want to be classy to celebrate it. Like, what? You have a a nice, classy, romantic movie playing or something to 
you know, commemorate. Nope. To commemorate this auspicious date, Abema will stream 12 episodes of the Yosuga no Sora romance anime on its live channel. Ugh. I am disgusted. <laughs> oh, imagine commemorating Kiss Day with... Imagine if in 1946... You go back to that historic moment and you told the the director and everything like to commemorate this day almost a hundred years later, we're gonna stream an anime about a guy who just fucks his sister. <laughs> like I, I, I really can't. Like, I really just can't. I really don't know what to say. Like, how dare they? Like all the romances. Why like, why? Why the incestuous <laughs> one? Why? I mean, there, there was more t- I feel like there would be even more tasteful incestuous anime you can go with oh was... oh you're not drawing a line at the incest you're like no That's fine. It, first off this is like trash incest there was a really <laughs> good incest anime i just forget what it was called oh man it's gonna bother me now um fuck it, it was anyone, tasteful listen if anyone gets down like that you know and likes and likes that kind of shit please say it in the comments only can remember i guess Dot, oh, dot, is it dot. Koi Kaze? Hold on. I now need to know. Oh Koi god. Kaze. Oh my god. I'm pulling it, Drew, and looking this up on stream. Yep, it is Koi Kaze. <laughs> That's my old IMD. Not myself. pulling it up on stream. Came out in 2001. Yeah, that was when, that was when we had class in our incest. Not, not Ori Emo and Yosuga no Sora. <laughs> Did Ori Emo actually have any incest in it? They kissed. Oh. And depending on the, I guess, the, if you play the visual novel, you can have sex with her. Go further, yeah. Uh, ew. <laughs> not even ew. Is it, is it sad that I'm like ill and even because it's incestuous? I mean, also ill, but. Ill because it's, it's, it's her. It's her. It's, it's ill because it's her. She's such a tor- Ill she's because a ter- it's her. And yes. her neck is right there. Come on. Yes, she's a terrible mm-hmm. human being. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. duh. God. Imagine her raising your kid. Nope. And, Oh, uh, <laughs> for real! They should have just aired Toradora. That has like one of the best kiss scenes ever. Come on, come on! Oh man, I can't wait till you know the the MC has a kid with fucking what's her name, and they have some kind of defect because incest. Hello, <laughs> and and then she's just like, ah, oh, stupid kid, or like I don't know, <laughs> punches it in, in the face. I don't know. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> incest and child abuse nice i wouldn't put it past her she's really not a good person <laughs> on a, on a more nice note that doesn't involve <laughs> incest actually maybe not this might not be so <laughs> but uh wakame kombu's the maid i hired recently is mysterious gets a tv anime in july um so this is a, i believe this is a pretty popular manga Basically, it's about this maid who uh, is super hot and ada ada, and she is working for this Shota, and romantic hijinks ensue. Right, so. uh, Shota cons rejoice, I guess. Yes, it's not often we get a Shota con show, you know. I appreciate it. I guess. Um... If you're looking forward to some etchy uh, show next season, I guess you go with this one. Yeah, although I really like her design. Also, <laughs> yeah, she looks great. <laughs> also, her name is Lilith, so I'm just like, okay, so suc- <laughs> succubus it is. Yes, succubus. succubus. Always with the succubuses in the show, does. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, now that we're done with our news, it's time for our weekly reviews, and we're going to start off with Spy Family, episode seven. Um, is this gonna be my episode of the week? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna split it with something. I know it's it's it, I. Yeah. I don't know if I want to split it. I might. I'll say it's my episode of the week for now. I might split it later on. Yeah. How I feel. Um. So yeah. No. This was this episode was. I called the episode very funny. Um. Mm. And just like I hope they would do, it started leaning more towards Anya going to school. Uh, yeah, I'm so funny. glad. I'm so glad the school cast is actually incredible. Like Becky, Becky, this episode was 
beautiful. I love Becky. Yeah, Becky Becky was me also. <laughs> it's very much me, even though I feel like in this case it worked out against uh poor Anya. Yeah. Because yes, she spends essentially like the entire episode trying to apologize to Damien. Mm-hmm. Not going so well. Yes, and for like the first half of the episode, she literally just gets blocked by Becky like hardcore. Like, hey, Damien. And she's like, no, fuck that loser. Fuck him. You're right. better than him. <laughs> right. <don't> him. <laughs> right. Becky's like starting so much shit. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, you're, ma- you're making me mess up in the mirror and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, um,. But yeah, eventually, <laughs> after Lloyd, you know, in so many ways, tries to send signs to his daughter to apologize, like, so many ways. Laid it on really thick. Super thick. I mean, what was your favorite, what was your favorite way? Was it the, the way he trimmed Sari into the bushes? Was no, it? it was the reflection thing. The reflection, like, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the reflection was. Is that like, you, God? Is that you? <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, Anya. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was that part. Whole part was really funny. Um, the climax of that section, of course, was the best part. Where, yeah. <laughs> where, where Damien, it's like this weird juxtaposition between like Anya and Damien. Like they're, it's like they're both having their own like inner, like intense inner struggle. Anya, well, mm. Anya just is just a telepath, so she can just hear everyone talking shit about her, which I felt so terrible for her. I know. Fuck these kids. How dare you talk about her stubby legs? Her stubby legs are cute. Right, and your legs are not much better like yeah I, first me, off to I me mean, you're yeah. all tiny as fuck like yeah <laughs> although it was super cute that you walked up to the table and, and she's too small to even like barely look over it <laughs> right just to walk around mm-hmm. yeah. Ugh, but yeah no those kids are trash yeah but then damien realizes that oh you know it might be it might be love Mm-hmm. Or masochism. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? If he wants another punch from Anya, he's just like, punch me again. <laughs> right. Or, it awoke something in him. Yeah. Or I'm going to be more wholesome about it and just say he likes that there's someone who doesn't take his shitty attitude. And he I likes that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm going <not gonna>, <laughs> to assume that he's not. Didn't, like develop an S and M fetish. <laughs> Maybe it's both. <laughs> I did like that when like he's thinking about her and like it, it you see all the, the times Anya looks at him, but it's like from his point of view. So he she has like super beautiful glossy eyes right. and like it's even more like adorable looking than she normally is. Right. I was like, wait, are, is this Otomege? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the shoujo filter over Anya. <laughs> <laughs> right it's like they borrowed uh otomo gay mobs um author said quick just do the eyes <laughs> yeah do the eyes quick quick <laughs> copy and paste right <laughs> <laughs> um so that was that part was really funny um i liked how it led to a, a much more heartwarming second half yeah the second half wasn't Com- like very funny, but it yeah. except for the first part. But it was mo- it was really good because I wanted to see your and um, Lloyd actually get like a romantic kind of family husband wife dynamic going, and I think that, that this episode did a really good job of like establishing that, like how they need to work off of each other. Um, I wouldn't say romantic, but I would definitely say co-parenting. Yeah, parenting's romantic. What? Parenting is romantic. Uh, like they're working together to take care of their child. I think that's romantic. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, you don't have to fuck for it to be romantic. 
it's not that's not how co-parenting works i don't see any sexual like there's no sexual tension but or moment well it doesn't have to be them. sexual it just it's just like nice seeing them work together to take care of the kid and like seeing them like oh i can fill in for the parts you lack and you fill in for the parts i lack you know that people do that when they get divorces. Like you know that's what that what 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 okay, Lloyd and, the cynic is here. <laughs> you no, know, when Lo, I'm just saying when Lo, when Lloyd and your do that kind of parenting style. And, and she did the whole thing where she's like I'm butting in and he was like, Oh no, you're part of the family. That was cute. I mean, yeah, but that's like that's not even like the bare minimum of like romance. She's forgetting oh, that she's yeah. part of the. She forgot that she's married. Uh, that here she's, we go. Drew, she's literally Drew, acting. Drew in a nice moment. She's right? acting like a stranger because you're wrong. Heartwarming, yeah. cute scene, and Drew wants to come in. It's, it's, like, no, oh, it's, it's so nice different scene. from being divorced. It's not romantic or sweet at all. It's just whatever. No, it was a nice scene. I agree. It was <laughs> it was it one that was like romantic? No. Absolutely not. I would. I I think it was romantic. Cause I like to see good parents parenting, and I think that's, that's very and nice. no, it's fine. To a good nice, parents. sweet. Good, and it's nice, play. and that's they're great. doing good parenting. Good, great co-parenting. So I wouldn't nice. call it co-parenting. I would call it. I would it call is it co-parenting. You don't have parenting. to. Call, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to add the prefix to. It. I mean, if they don't have like a romantic relationship with each other, it's basically just co-parenting at this point. Okay, so Drew's being cynical. Got it. I'm not being cynical. That's literally what it's you called. You're being extremely cynical. You're you're trying to you're artificially being like, well, there's no relationship between them, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I. I, just, I like, what, what I like seeing them. What, what you say? Like you saying it doesn't. You saying it doesn't count. What is it? It as in them having a moment together. You're making it they sound like a, they a, had a moment, but it wasn't. But it was thing wasn't, where it's just like they are working together to accomplish. They something. had a like, moment. It just it was wasn't. It just wasn't. Ro- it just wasn't. Ro- like, it just wasn't romance based. It literally was just like it was like the moment was about them. The fu- I think we Anya. just have two different views of what romance is. I call it romantic because they were connecting too. It wasn't just like, how are we going to treat Anya? Here is my plan and here is your... Like, they clearly were going back and forth and connected to each mean, other. I mean, listen, we, <laughs> we, we connect on, like, raising the channel. Does that, does that make us romantic? No, because the channel is not a child. <laughs> oh, so if, we, so if you're raising a child together, would that, also, be, a, we, we would that would be romantic? Not, we, we definitely don't have the same energy that your and uh, Lloyd had in that scene. <laughs> So if they were, so if we were raising, they had a child, clearly <laughs> had a romantic energy and a romantic vibe going. What? Yes, they were connected. Go rewatch the scene and tell me if it. Go all right. Go rewatch that scene and then watch a scene from like, I don't know, what's that <laughs> shitty movie called where they're like all uh, accountants or salespeople or something. Oh, Wolf, or, or go watch Wolf of Wall Street and see two people working together and be like, these are the same things. They're the equal levels of romance in both these scenes. Business partners working together and parents raising their kids. I would say they're more like good friends raising a kid. Oh, no. They had they had romantic moments. They had like tension there. They were looking into each other's eyes. Your was being all. I look all in your. I look in your. Eddie. I look in all your. I look in your eyes all oh the time. God. Drew's so cynical. He doesn't like romance. I forgot. I do. Lo- I love. Drew romance. doesn't like straight romance. If this was, if this was a yaoi, <laughs> Drew would be like, "Oh my god, this is the most romantic, beautiful scene." <laughs> Uh, that's not true. No matter how, superior, totally no, no matter how superior, it's more it romantic. Is, but... It's more romantic than anything that happened in what was that show we watched last season? <laughs> For the first eleven episodes. Wow. So mm-hmm. I know you're lying. No. no. Because uh-huh. they had a they had a deeper connection. For, I don't find it romantic when one person confesses and the other person's just like, oh, I don't know. Okay. If, if, that, if that's if if this is a hill you want to die on, it'd be my it's guess. Not even a hill. It's just you being cynical and it's, overly I'm, critical of romance. Not, I just don't. See, I just don't see the the romance yet. Which is one of my, ironically one of the things I was thinking about. I was just like, oh, in my mind, I was like. Oh, it'd be nice if you know they started showing like romantic interest in each other. But then I was like, that that might be pushing it because you know they might want to focus on like the whole family dynamic as opposed to them like potentially dating. That's what I was thinking because that's, that's how that's how far that's how much I you, didn't see it. For you romance has to be physical, and for me, it just has to be emotional. Like connecting on an emotional level is romantic to me, and they, they were connecting on an emotional level. Maybe if they bond, maybe if they like bonded over something that wasn't like Anya 
then I'd believe Anya's it. Anya's their kid! <laughs> Their kid that he just randomly adopted, and then she married oh, yeah. into. I forgot and you. She married not into, love an adopted kid. and that she married into. Okay, just to have a so... cover. Just to have a cover. I'm not Dr- saying Dr- you can't have. You're, you're, I'm not saying you can't. You're being. You're I like, am not saying she's a stepchild. She can't I be loved. I am not <laughs> saying that they can't. That she can't grow feelings for his stepchild. I'm just saying <laughs> that. For at least for me to be convinced, I need to see the attention that doesn't outside of Anya. Then that would convince me. Why? What's wrong with there being tension around Anya? <laughs> Cause it's well to me that's that's not that's not tension. That's just like we want to we both well, care I about the even, child. I don't think that's like saying, the right that's word. Like, yeah, right. I think, but it's but not, they're I think, connecting, but they're connecting. They're connecting. Yes, Anya. I'll agree. I'll agree. Anya they're is connecting. going to be the thing that connects them. You know that, right? It's not going to be like they're going to they're not going to work independent of Anya. <laughs> it's not going to be like Anya's going to be written out of the show and it's going to turn into the Lloyd. I Lloyd agree. I agree. Anya's going to be their main bridge, but like. If if every if every conversation they have is considered romantic, that's because they're talking about Anya and how to like raise I, her. I don't think it's just because and... it was about Anya. I think it's just they were just connecting on an emotional level. It, like it helps that it was about Anya because they were like they're clearly invested in Anya. But it was only about Anya. What? Like, so what's wrong with Anya? <laughs> nothing. There's nothing wrong with, with Anya. I'm just saying you're just talking about the like the like the safety. And 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 well, being well they're talking about how they, they raise like. her child. Yeah, but it was yeah. just like how they how do they raise her properly? There's nothing and wrong. There's nothing what's wrong. What's their parenting strategy? There's yes. There's nothing wrong with being very passionate about wanting to to raise Anya the best way. And that actually made me like Yor a lot this episode because like Yor was like that. You know, she had that softness for um. For Anya, when Lloyd was like, you know, going, doing like a little bit too much, which by the way, very, mm. that is not a common thing between like mother and daughter relationships. It's usually like, it'll be that way for a mother and son or like a father mm. and daughter, but not usually for mother and daughter. So well, that I can't was... speak on that, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I had two sisters, so yeah. Mm. <laughs> I can. Um, yeah, that that was very. I like that 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 change up in the dynamic. Um, but yeah, no, they just they just both really care about Anya's well being, and you know, that can. I feel like you can connect with one, and this is what I mean because I didn't mean it in a cynical way. I'm just saying there are people who aren't necessarily together who connect over. Their child it may not be like, you know, whether or not it turns into them dating or whatever is, in my mind, a, a potentially a totally different matter. Like it can happen and it might not happen. I'm not saying it won't happen mm. because of Anya. I'm just saying I've also seen cases, many cases, whether it's TV or real life, where these people are like, hey, despite. Even if even if we hate each other or just kind of like eh, about each other, not saying that's the case with Yor and Lloyd, but you know, the the conversation changes when the child's involved because now it's like, okay, but we gotta do the what's best for our child. So how do we do that? And that usually... I feel like it's not so much the situation as it is the way that they were with each other in that situation. Like any situation could be romantic if the cat the people in it are bonding with each other like it's like the difference between like what if i get a flat tire and somebody has to help me change it clearly that ha- that's a situation that doesn't have to involve romance at all it could just be like two people changing a tire right. but if there's like tension between uh, you know a person dating another person and they're like looking at each other and talking about like i remember the last time this happened and, and they're having like it's, it could be the same situation but it produces very different types of uh emotions and feeling i just feel like yeah the situation could be replicated if they were like divorced parents or something but in this particular situation i felt that they were bonding really well over anya which was cute and romantic because okay. they were going back and forth with how they're like how they complete each other and they work with each other and they 
clearly have a thing for each other, or at least something is starting to develop. Like, he clearly does care about her independent of the mission. Even if he doesn't realize that yet. Is it about Anya or Yor? Yor. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, maybe I, well, maybe I do... Maybe I, maybe I have to watch it again, because I... I don't know, I did not interpret it as such. I literally thought they were just... They were, they were bonding, but just bonding over their love for... Uh, their budding love for Anya. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Ugh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a great moment, though. Very sweet. Um, and then poor Anya fell asleep after trying to work hard. Yeah, poor Anya. Oh, God, being a telepath at that age is not easy. No, especially because she doesn't know how to really control it well. Yeah. I'm hoping... Oh, I'm hoping she... I'm hoping everyone just thinks wonderful thoughts of her in the future. Or at least she knows how to block them hoes out. Also, it ended uh, with us getting a little snippet of um, yours brother. Right. So that'll happen next week. Yes, and apparently how... God, you are so... (laughs) You're... It's like, ma'am... I feel like you're really good at killing and everything else. And is everything kinda, else too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, starting, it's starting to give that because how do you, how do you not tell your brother that you're married? <laughs> You're gonna come in there and be like, "What the fuck? Who's this household?" <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, that was that. That was my family. Really good episode. Looking forward to next week. And mm-hmm. we're going to move on to season three of Kaguya-sama wa Kokura Setai. It's a romantic episode seven. Um... <laughs> I like the really, I, I think my favorite part was the first part. Oh, uh, with Eno and the, and the whole. Yeah. See, when, when they joined the festival committee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Ishigami versus like the other nerds. <laughs> that was cute. Yeah, that was that was really funny. Like I don't know, <laughs> just just watching everyone get back in like the the whole ah we're gonna be hype over stuff because you know we're just like that, and also half of us really have a crush on what's her face, uh, Subame. Yeah, to be fair, Subami is super hot, so I get it. Yeah. Especially that one little scene that they had, where like, oh, yes, also, she's super gymnastic, flexible. Yeah. yeah. Lucky those guys weren't there. They were fucking, like, exploded. Yeah, that was pretty... <laughs> that was pretty lewd for the show, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I was kind of surprised. Um, um, For me, my favorite part was the... Uh, the the chica balloon thing, <laughs> as usual with Kaguya. My favorite part is the chica part. Now I want to go back to last week. Chica was a dick in this episode too, but it was funny because it was a point to her being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like when she was shit talking. Um, what's her name? Kashiwagi. <laughs> oh my god, that! Oh my god, that shade. Yeah. I was like, ooh, <laughs> she just said. She just... <laughs> <laughs> they said she said i don't know anything about taking care of a child she's like huh that's surprising because you do stuff that that allows children to be birthed i was like <laughs> i said oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, after all he was like the fuck did you say i'm out of here <laughs> what you say she's like nothing Mm-mm-mm. that was <laughs> oh sick burn bro yeah she got wagging on Mm-hmm. This is my chica. This is the chica I love. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I have a bunch of really like. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're gonna we we'll learn how to talk again. Mm-hmm. Um, this also had a lot of good mm-hmm. like moments like scattered throughout. You know, here and there. Yeah. Uh, the whole <laughs> them interviewing, um, Kaguya. Oh yeah. 
That was very funny. Fan club. <laughs> like they just let me break down, making random noises, and Kaguya's just like, "The fuck's like, what's mm. happening?" <laughs> and mm. the first time that she said, "Don't worry, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a pre-existing condition." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and at the end, I forget uh, of the interview, Kaguya says something about. The, uh, how she just like got good at aiming she's like oh yeah I just kind of did it this way and then I got a bullseye and then I never stopped doing it like yeah, that yeah I just did it like this forever <laughs> and then they just like oh and they just fall, fall to the ground <laughs> oh my god that was really I gotta funny. say even though I'm like I think this was one of the weaker episodes of the season mm-hmm. I do like I appreciate the continuity like I like that when we get into an arc they just it keeps going and going and building on itself because now I'm, I'm hyped for the cultural festival, you know? Like, I'm like, man, they're really building up to this. So, and when Kaguya builds up to something, it rarely disappoints. You know, what I really hope that they still do, even though they said it was rejected. I still want that battle royale to happen. Oh my God. I feel like that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Like... <laughs> this is going to be unofficial or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The unofficial battle royale. Oh, mm-hmm. please. Um, I loved how the the last section ended with with the chica thing, mm-hmm. where she's like, "Oh yeah, just use news balloon. That'll probably solve it." And he just pops it instantly. <laughs> she, she has to teach him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor poor thing. Mm-hmm. Poor thing. But yeah, no, this was this was yeah, this was a decent episode. It is one of the weaker ones, but you know, I feel like it was a week necessary. A week, it's like a week Kaguya episode is still like relatively really great compared to most anime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, appreciate it much. And with that being said, we're gonna move on to Komi-san wa Komi-sho this season mm-hmm. two episode. Oh, it's on my phone because we watched it at your place. Um. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, <laughs> um let's see, what part was great? I w I'm gonna get, go to the best part of the episode and literally was um N- Narus or <laughs> yeah, Naru, 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 she's still, yeah. She's still. <laughs> yeah. Great uh, naming. Naru, she's ten sister. out of ten out of ten naming wow he is this man is delusional like <laughs> like usually people with narcissists who have who have narcissist tendencies there's usually something about them that kind of quote unquote justifies it or uh, makes some like you can make some kind of argument like oh this is why he deems himself you know mm-hmm. he thinks he's all that in a bag of chips him no, that's just homeboy just has a problem. Yeah, just a bit. So um, yeah, no, and this dude was so funny, and I love how, even though he's so unaware about his own issues, I think everyone just, even though we're two seasons in, you can clearly mm-hmm. see by this episode. They already know what his deal is, and they're like, "You cannot talk to Comey." Like, yeah, everyone... they're like, "You in particular, get the fuck out of here! You're not allowed to talk to Comey." <laughs> like, every... and then you just see this whole segment of everyone just stopping him from talking to Comey. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was so hilarious. The the girl with the badge just like shits him in the kneecap. <laughs> yeah, the kneecap. Your mind just proceeds to just read him for just read him, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just dragged him, and then Kazuya's like, "Oh my god, <laughs> hey Komi, mm. hey Komi." I love how he has his own personal like background music. Yeah, and they did a little. Cool, the music was really good this episode because they kept going back and forth between uh, like playing different themes and like fading out and stuff. Like, they did a really good job with the audio this episode. Yeah, the comedic timing. Agreed. Um, this is a great addition. He's like 
really funny. He doesn't. I he doesn't even have to talk to. Yeah, and I like that he's not a dick. Like, yeah, I was afraid that he was gonna be like this dickish asshole. I actually feel like sorry for him in some right now. Makes me feel sorry because it's like you're not a dick. Like, so now I feel bad for you when (laughs) I feel like your your delusion is shattering. Mm Hmm. But and making me root for the narcissist. I'm like, oh, somebody be his friend, please. <laughs> right, anyone. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Comey was like, here's a handkerchief. And then he immediately bounced back. He's like, oh, no. She, she... <laughs> I forgot how that ended. He asked, he kind of like makes a movement to like ask for a number. And she's just like, <laughs> Yeah, no. And she just walks away. <laughs> walks away. <laughs> just runs away. <laughs> and then he just plays it off as if he was asking for Tadano's number. Yeah. And he just, like, harasses Tadano. Here's my selfie, my daily selfie to you. <laughs> Let me tell you, the way I would have blocked his ass with the swiftness. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Me now would have blocked him with the swiftness. Um... Yeah, me back in as a teenager, I'd been like, oh, God, boy. <laughs> Unless he was, like, not attractive. Then, uh, that's what I thought. Um, but, yeah, but then after, um, you know, they have the segment where they're talking about going on the school trip to Kyoto. Mm-hmm. Um, and which leads to, like, a definitely more, like, very serious moment. Or- yeah, it was a really, like, uh, the most we've ever heard Komi talk in a single episode. Ever. Like, I think yeah. the more than this, she talked more this episode than all the episodes combined. Yeah, easily. Easily. Like, she literally, this is like her she, first legit monologue. She had yeah, an extended dialogue, like, oh, progress. Like, I felt proud of her. I was like, oh, shit, we're getting, right. especially when, because the only way she was, able to talk to him before was when they're talking on the phone and this time he hung up or she hung up on, she hung up on him but they still maintained uh being able to talk to each other like through the corner which was pretty cute yeah i agree i was like oh that worked and then once again you just have the, that's the one thing even if this enemy isn't as like gufa gufa like um mm-hmm. kaguya I mm-hmm. really like that they're really pushing the progression between um Komi and Tarano's relationship. Yeah, and it's surprising because I feel like this is this could definitely be that type of like a show that just keeps doing the same gags over and over and never makes any kind of progress. Like kind of like school days. Not school yeah. days. Ah, school uh, rumble. <laughs> no, school days made progress. <laughs> a little too, okay. a little too much progress. <laughs> Nothing like about progress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just like misunderstanding after misunderstanding but right. they, they actually do give the characters a lot of development and progress the relationships which is nice yeah so they actually have me super hyped for this trip mm-hmm. um i'm you know i feel like not i want something romantic to happen between them i feel like it's not it's gonna make me sad but mm-hmm. you know what i'm i should be thankful with this much <laughs> I should be thankful that they went this far. Damn! I hope you want to make a bet. Who gets who gets kissed first, Kaguya or Komi? <laughs> huh? That's uh, a good one. Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> this relationship is progressing faster. At this rate, it might be Komi. Right. That's a, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> that's a big one. The school trip bit. and everything. Yeah, it might be Komi. It she, might be. It. We'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. Up next, we're moving on to not Shield Hero. We're moving on to uh, Ahadan Sun Wa Hakadanai, episode eight. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> So I made a a thing or made a comment last week about how I'm like, meh, you know, it's kind of a little, getting a little stale with the one jokes. Mm-hmm. 
or with the one note jokes um which i still kind of feel about i still kind of like that hasn't changed that sentiment hasn't changed but i will say one of the funnier gags that keeps me entertained is definitely the one with their teacher who keeps like oh, yeah. exploding with no <laughs> and they kept escalating it over and over and over, <laughs> over and over like she i feel like she's very much she kind of does what Rido does mm-hmm. except it's just like a different outcome <laughs> which is her passing out yeah she she gets off on the steam of them at this point, I'm just them doing anything. Yeah, yeah, right, I'm like the esteem. Like that's why I question myself. I'm like, what the fuck is the esteem between her and what's his name from uh, Spy Family with Elegant? elegant right, <laughs> they need to hook up. <laughs> esteem, oh, get esteem, oh, and then well, she would definitely be dead. Yeah. I don't know about him, but she be she be dead. Um, <laughs> she was sleeping. And she just. Fucking bleeds out on her bed. Can I say, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that part was kind of like, ooh, this is weird. <laughs> a little weird for me. What? Like, her thinking about her Yes, your parents, your parents, your parents, your parents about your, your students in a, in a romantic way with each other. That's, oh, that's, you know, it's kind of sort of a choto. Mm. <laughs> no, Drew, it's just the esteem. That's <laughs> uh, Yeah, it didn't look like, I look a little bit more than the steam. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like it's one of those things where I'm like, Oni, <laughs> Oni, call the FBI, but not for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was weird. I mean, I let it go for the sake of comedy. Mm. But also, what the fuck, girl? Yeah, calm down. <laughs> right, literally covered in blood. Shout out to her. Shout out to her friend who yeah, felt her. I, actually there. Right, I definitely was like, I'm like, oh my god, potential lesbian vibes, but I don't think that's happening. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just, you know, I feel like between, I think ever since the whole thing with Angie and um Olivia, <laughs> now I just, I just want that. Happen right yeah, now you're just projecting that to all the right. other shows we're watching. Period. <laughs> um, but then you know, I'm I'm fine. I was fine with the festival part. That was pretty cute. I like mm. you know, Rido's typical like ah, expectations versus reality shtick, <laughs> where he's just like, yes, I'm preparing to fire this gun and this angle, da da da, and then he misses and. Oshiro, of course, hits it because she's literally good at everything except yep. social interactions. Um, <laughs> oh my god, the part where homegirl got like a bunch of uh, uh food, food from the food. Oh my god, listen, as someone who is watching what they eat, that that hurt me. Yeah, that that hurt all that me. stuff looked really good. I really wanted some like takoyaki or something after that. Right, I know we're. I, where are we going? Are we going? I I don't know where we're going with what a weave. Shout out to what a weave, by the way. We're hey, going, weave. We're going. We're going somewhere with them. Some Japanese ish place. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they have takoyaki. Uh, me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Meanwhile, what I had for dinner was like a few pieces of curry chicken, a little bit of rice, and carrots. Uh, I just have leftover pizza, so it's not much better. Clearly, that that's not the problem. With <laughs> I'm saying I'm eating healthy, and I just want to eat fat, fat fried shit. Mm. Ugh, I miss junk food. Anyways, um. Where was I? I lost my dog. Oh yeah, and then of course we have the scene with Futaba, which I'm glad of, of all the little kids that are in that show. I'm glad we keep seeing her the most. I'm yeah, she's the most fun. Yes, and I love how she was like, 
oh my god Ugh, it's you i think so what, what what happens or she's like do i have to call the cops or do i have to scream excuse oh, because me didn't she like grab his arm or something right i think you guys and like do i have to scream and then he's like but i'm leaving you alone like, it was like one of the things where it's just like <laughs> yeah. but i'm leaving you like you're not understanding the contradiction in your <laughs> statement right now mm-hmm. like it can't be a stranger danger if he away. leaves <laughs> right so that little back and forth is really funny very mm-hmm. very on brand for her yeah and then she finds her dad who apparently she bosses him around to um but yeah and then eventually uh what's her face uh Ahadan and Raido reunite and then they say and then they see the little um fireworks together it was like yep. a cute little cute. bonding moment um right they're holding hands and I'm just like oh my god more progression between the couples <laughs> First, Komi, Kaguya, or Ahadan? Oh, they're never... They're, yeah, so it's never happening in Ahadan. It's, not, it's no. nev- never. <laughs> It'll happen in one of the teacher's, like, fucking fantasies. <laughs> right, exactly. Or 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 we'll see, like, Ahadan, like, give him, like, a kiss on the cheek, and then the teacher's gonna mm-hmm. see, and then her face literally... Ex- like, her head just explodes. <laughs> explodes. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Yeah. So will we shall see. Looking forward to the next episode. Um, but until then, we're gonna move on to Tate no Yusha no Nariagari, season two, aka se- second season of Shield Hero episode seven. Your and this is my other episode of the week. You know, I don't know. Like, I understand why. I understand why. In a lot of ways, I was your second episode of the week. I don't know. I just do. I feel the same, though, is the question. Um. <laughs> Are you just happy that Ra- Ra- that Raftali is back to being a lolly? I'm happy that Raftali is back to being a lolly. <laughs> right. And we got another lolly on top of Raftalia. <laughs> right. I see. That's why it's not my episode of the week because no, but no, I, it's my episode of the week because mm. it was just first off after the gauntlet of crappy episodes. Yes, this is like this is season, this is like the this is like the breathiest breath of fresh air. Yes, we actually feels like oh my god, this is something important to the main plot and there's yes. good characters and i don't have to listen to rushia talk 15 times an episode yes uh the I, i'm not gonna lie this new character kizuna like hard carry this episode oh yeah she was great yeah, she even had like a bit of a dark moment when she was like trying to kill herself <laughs> right where you saw that in the background she's like <laughs> i was gonna give up but then i was like nah mm-hmm but she's like, give up, and then I saw the news, so I was like, oh, that kind of give up. And then you see her just rip it apart with her bare hands. Yeah. I was like, oh, she's strong. She's, yeah, she ripped mm-hmm. apart fucking rope. <laughs> right, and she is the hunting hero. Is And I'm just like, is so much that... much cooler than the fucking book hero. That's <laughs> so much. Um, Like, is that, was that like a fishing rod yeah she has a fishing rod right okay because i was like i saw her and i'm like oh it's gi- it's giving hunter hunter <laughs> um did they have fishing rods in hunter hunter um for everyone's um for everyone who doesn't watch hunter hunter that is gone that's like gone's weapon quote unquote weapon mm. of of choice for like i think like the first arc essentially eventually <laughs> Doesn't use it anymore. But um yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, her, her I think hers might be a little, a little bit stronger though. Yeah, ask the Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you, when I said when I said homegirl's head was gonna explode from watching Ahadan <laughs> and um Rido Kiss, I was like, well speaking of <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just like that they went back to its root. Like, this feels like yes. Shield Hero author was just like, all right, we need to go back to our roots. Very what made Shield Hero successful? Yeah. And it was like, first up, Lowly Raftalia. We need to, we need to really go back to the roots <laughs> of the series. Um, Raftalia was super cute this episode. Um, but more so, I just like, it felt like Shield Hero because we actually got to see now if we do stuff and be smart about it. Like, the way he finds out how to escape the infinite labyrinth was honestly kind of cool and i like that there was continuity with the with the seed from the first season the wild crazy plant yeah yeah no that was that was cool i was confused at first and then i was like ah mm-hmm. yeah and then i also really liked that uh we had a good mix of like some really minor action but like uh the character interactions were really cute and fun a bit of comedy here and there. New character was great. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see more of her. I just feel bad. I don't know where Fido is. Fido just like fucking disappeared. <laughs> yeah, but she'll be back. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> the Adventures of Philo. We're gonna get an episode where it's gonna just gonna be that. Well, if they're all level one, that means she's like an egg, or like in the uh, her basic. Oh my god, basic chocobo form, yeah. Right, I forget. That, that was her original form before she became a lolly. Mm-hmm. Wow. So yeah. Watch her just be in his pocket or some shit. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would, but it wouldn't. But I know what you mean. Yeah, this is a, this is a really good episode. Um... You know, I, I'm looking forward to see Kizuna become reunited with Glass and the Ark. And then, like, the whole, yeah, so we all are kind of supposed to kill each other, question mark? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how that awkward moment's going to play out. Yeah, it's going to I, I imagine she's just going to join them, and they're going to be like, oh, well, you saved our friend, so we'll let you go this time. Right. Until, until season three. And then we'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. Good episode. Really good episode. You're, I hope it keeps it this way. All right. Let's move on to Otomege Sekai wa Mabni Kibishi Sekai Des. Episode. Episode. Oh, right. It's on my phone. The 8? Mm-hmm. Episode 8, I believe. Yes. Oof. Um, so, wait, what's the, what's the bitch's name again? Stephanie? Stephanie, yeah. Right. So Stephanie blackmails Olivia because she's just like, I can't, she's like, I can't stand to see my, she can't stand to see my favorite lesbian couple prosper. Mm -hmm. So she's like, let me just throw a wrench in there. And just shit talk you like crazy, borderline abuse you, and then make you blackmail you into, you know, convincing Leon to fight some sky pirates that she ends up hiring. Yeah. And I'm just like, all of this for what? <laughs> like, petty revenge. Right. I'm like, you want, and like, like, were you hoping they were gonna kill him? Take his mm-hmm. shit? Like, what was the end game here? This kind of cute little mob moment. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just, mean, just shitting on her, just being like, ah, oh, well, fuck you. Now what? Right. <laughs> well, Miss Girl forgot what time Angelica was on. Because <laughs> the way she confronted her, so, <laughs> I don't know why she like said her whole plan out loud. Yeah, I don't know why she keeps confronting Angelica and knowing that Angelica's just gonna beat the shit out of her. <laughs> literally, she's like, I can literally beat you again at any moment's notice. Like, <laughs> because once again, Angelica, <laughs> like, yoked her ass up. Yeah. <laughs> literally she showed up off- with, like, a bandages on. <laughs> right. Lit her off her feet and said, bitch, what'd you do? <laughs> and she said, listen... 
He said, some shit happens to them, like, you're done. You finished, girl. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people play into, like, the politics of the shit. But then there's, mm -hmm. like, certain points where it's like, girl, fuck your politics. You ain't doing nothing to me. So next episode, Stephanie's gonna show up in like crutches and like a cast and like Angelica. You know what I did to Olivia today? <laughs> 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 Taking like a SpongeBob me like how many times I have to teach you this lesson, Stephanie? <laughs> right, and then she's like, you know what? Don't even bother telling me. Let's just skip to the ass beat, the ass whooping. <laughs> Pushes her down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's not that kind of girl. Unless she was doing it, like, mid-beating her ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, all that aside, there's some, some interesting things that are happening this episode. For one, actual, like, character development. Yeah. Like, red and purple. That's what I'm calling the dudes. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just going to first one by hair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> red and purple actually have character development. And, you know, they kind of get humbled by watching Leon take out a whole, like, group of Sky Pirates. Mm -hmm. And they're like, damn, we ain't shit. And, I like how incredibly dumb they are when, they're, when the pirates attack. And then he's like, like oh. guys, get ready to fight. Right. Like, what? What, do you, oh, what, what do you mean what, fight? What? what are we going to do? <laughs> Fucking idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, and the way I was living for this terrible, terrible fighting animation. Oh my oh lord. Oh my god. I was gonna say, it looks like 1960s Gundam, but I'm like, I think 1960s Gundam looks better. <laughs> <laughs> like the way it just... <laughs> it's a falling for me. It's Yo, a falling for me. I'm 100% sure the falling is just them shrinking the image slowly to make it look like it's falling. They're like, oh no, like five minutes later, oh no. And they're doing it on purpose because they did the falling thing like three times. I'm like, all right, you know this doesn't look good. Why do you keep going back to it? Because they're doing the best they can. <laughs> and this, this... That scene, don't even put it. Do, do what you did with the Angelica fight last episode. Just make it all stills. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> NG, NG, NG Productions is doing the best they can <laughs> with what clearly what very very little they have. Yeah, is at least that's what I want to say. But then they also did, um, the detective is dead. They did. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah. So well, I don't. Well, what, did they blow all their budget on that I show? Did, I feel like they did, or they're, they're definitely <laughs> saving it for the next season of Uzaki Chan. Oh yeah, probably. Like, well, Zaki would have like a god tier animation then. Did, I mean, it did the first time, so yeah, they need to really work that uh the Uzaki boob uh, jiggle physics. In <laughs> they're like, you know, they're like, it takes <laughs> every time Uzaki's breast jiggle. We're in the studio for five days, <laughs> <laughs> animating it, doing the, the the physics surrounding the jiggle. <laughs> Oh man, they yeah, they really did not. Ooh, yeah, so action is clearly just not their strong suit. No, definitely not. Not at all. There are no clover works. <laughs> they are that is for certain. But hey, I feel like because the rest of this show is so like funny, mm -hmm. somehow that just makes everything funnier. I don't know why. Yeah, it kind of works in a sense like. I feel like it's supposed to be bad on purpose. It's you know? not. It's definitely not. But it's definitely not. But it feels like because <laughs> right. it just feels like another comedic moment. You know, it's like ah, ah he's beating them up. He's <laughs> killing you, Sky Pirate. I, it's gonna suck when we get to like a serious fight and it looks horrible. But for now, it's funny. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, can't wait for those PowerPoint um, PowerPoint animations. Right? <laughs> uh, we also got a bit of development with um, Olivia, where at the end she's right. just like, "Why are you? Why? What am I to you? Am I just a pet?" I'm like, "That's actually an interesting thing because he right. he never really defines his relationship with her. It's just like I'm doing this because right. reasons. Like, you know, I feel like he kind of taught her out all the time. So mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that's actually. I at first I thought it was just being drama for the drama, and I'm just like. Mm -hmm. 
you know, actually. From mm-hmm. our point of view, it's just this guy who just comes and being nicer all the time for some reason. Yeah, he doesn't like, know why. Like, you know, all the other rich people look down on me and shit on me. But yet you two aren't, so I don't know. Maybe you guys, like, you know, she's assuming they have ulterior motives, which is so mm-hmm. funny because it's usually the times where they don't suspect them, that's when they have ulterior motives. But. Exactly. So, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, yeah. I want to see... I want to see how that's going to get resolved. I wasn't, like, drag on too long. I hope it does get uh, resolved by next episode, though. Um, I'm hoping it does, too. Yeah, that's because I feel like there's just... There's other things we can do. Mm-hmm. I do love that one part. Um, before we move on, that one point where um, uh, Julius is talking to his mom. And he's like, "Oh, why can't I go hunt the space pirates herder?" And then I just love her response. She's like, "The fact that you don't know is exactly the reason why." And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, mom's I gonna mom." <laughs> oh, I'm left with no choice but to stand. Mm, 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 mm. She's so she's everything. She's yes. everything. She is the moment, and something from uh, you know that Wendy Williams meme. If if you know it, I'm talking to a bunch of straight people. Who who, who am I yeah. kidding? Who am I kidding? No, we don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, great episode. Can't wait for next week. Um. Oh, last but not least, we have the Hachi game, which, um, yeah, I guess this is my other episode of the week. What? Oh, no. I'm just, I'm here for... I'm... Just like, because it's messy as fuck. Yes, it's so, it's so messy. I don't know what's what. Like everything is like everything's just been flipped upside down in a matter of like two episodes. <laughs> like, like everything shifted so much and it didn't stop shifting. Like, you know, we all we thought that he, um, like the whole thing about Tenji and Shiho, we all thought it was like. Oh, like he's just obsessed with her, like because like you know fucked up weird Yandere mm-hmm. thing, and they were like it wasn't that at all. Like they managed, they managed to flip it, flip it on its head again. Yeah, where it's kind of like damn, I feel bad for Tenji now. <laughs> right, Unless, of course he's lying. I don't know exactly. We don't even know. That's the guy. We don't even know. He was like, yeah, it's my second time, and I mean, I'm assuming he's telling the truth. Because they yeah, showed, like, actual time. flashbacks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, he's mad at She-Ho because She-Ho's family somehow got involved. I don't think she... Uh... Is she a gold digger, though? <laughs> That's mm-hmm. the question. We don't know. We just... We... We just do not know. That's what I like about this episode because it was just like <laughs> it only just gave me more questions, but not like in a bad a way. Every episode, yeah. I know, but like as long as it's a good one that makes sense, yeah. I'm not. I'm I'm here for it. I am too. I'm just kind of curious. Where did they go? Like, so what, they won game two. Does that mean they just like like she and the rest of them just are they done now or like? Uh, we. We don't know. We don't know where they went. Well, I'm sure they're going to work their way back into the plot somehow. Absolutely. But... Absolutely. Um, and you know what's so crazy? The fact that, like... I... I feel like this might be a hot take. Mm-hmm. I could definitely see, like... Everything that happened to Tenji. I mean, given the fact... Like, a little bit exaggerated. Because, you know, it, this this is... Tomodachi game. But, like, mm-hmm. I can, like, kind of see that happening. Like, not to the sense where some kid randomly just has, like, a million fucking yen for no reason, but... And all that shit has... And they start, like, trading and investing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure all of that's illegal. 
<laughs> in in Japan and America. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah, like I could definitely see them being like, "Yeah, we're investing and being friends," and they get immediately just throwing that all the way over a girl. Yep. I get a billion percent I, see that. I've seen it happen. I'm pretty sure I've yeah, like it's happening in some. <laughs> Right, like, women usually get in between men. Not saying, like, well, not usually. Sometimes. It happens sometimes. It's not uncommon if it happens, especially at, like, teen, at, like the teenager age, I should say. Or, you know, well, like... It happened in older times, let's be on teenager, too. I mean, it's more likely to happen when you're a teenager. Yeah. Because of immaturity and whatnot. But, um... But, oh, 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 the way I j- the way it just clicked that I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. uh, you think um, you think people in their 20s are any more mature than they were? Their teens? Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they definitely it made sense that it got in the way. Um, the only thing with me, though, it's just like, <laughs> if it was that much money, I would not give a fuck. I don't even think teenager me would, like, fuck that over for, like, mm-hmm. money. For money? Mm. <laughs> no, like, no. And then they end up, a quote-unquote, spending it on she And I guess that's when, you know, we start casting suspicion, because it's like, bitch, what do you mean mm-hmm. you spent it on she Yeah, like, what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> the... Does that mean Shiho knows, like, about all of you guys investing? Because I, I don't think Tenji told her. Yeah. Well, until he did, but until prior, <laughs> you until, until, right. Um, you know, prior to all that mess, but did, but like, yeah, what did she do with that information? That's a huge gap that we're missing. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be one of those things where it's like, haha, I'm casting you in an evil light. But then it's like, I'm not that evil. Or it's a little more complicated. Like, my dad yeah, I'm pretty found sure out. Like some, right. Yeah. My dad found out and kind of forced me to go along with this or else something that was going to happen. Like, some shit. Or like someone else was like, yeah, taking advantage of the situation without her knowing. Right. Oh my god. But then I feel so bad. Of course, I don't know how it's dumb. His dumbass said anything to Shiho. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you tell her? Mm-hmm. Like, why? Um, because then his dad dies. I'm just like, no, that's so sad. Yeah, poor daddy. I, I knew you that when they were they yeah. built him up like, oh, he was he, my dad's my hero, and he's, he's my just hero. Like... I love him the. I had to tell the one I love mm-hmm. the most. Also, why did he tell? Why did he tell him too? Yeah, he, he kind of. Fucked up. Yeah, he kind of got his dad killed a little bit. <laughs> um, Maybe he's the killer, not not the other guy. <laughs> <sighs> um. Also, everyone. I. It's interesting how, like, because of the math, everyone is like lying about their amount. Mm-hmm. Like, not okay. Let me phrase that. Not everyone. Some people are lying about their amount. They have. They're not as quote unquote even as they thought they would be. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm, I'm wondering. Ooh, so I can't wait for them to go back to that point. I do think though that Ten G is definitely like. I, I I can't even say like on the on the quote unquote good side now. I don't even think there was a good side. Right. <laughs> like he's on the side that's trying to take down. This whole game, the Odachi right. game, because he went as far as showing someone how much he owed, which ended up doubling his amount. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like that's a like he's that desperate. So at the very least, he's that desperate to get the MC on his side because he believes the MC has what it takes to to win. And then I don't know, I don't know what he's gonna do with that. I do like what, what, how do you think you're gonna destroy this Odachi game thing and like. Like how? I mean, like like how you're gonna you're gonna beat the game and then what? 
to be Squid Game style. You're going to become one of the uh, fucking selectors or something, and then uh, try to take them out from the inside. I mean, we we can't even say that Squid Game style because that didn't even happen in Squid Game. Well, we don't know what's going to happen in season two. True, but I feel like that's. What's I gonna really, happen. I really, I really, and I mean, I really hope the main character does not go back into Squid Games. Please, don't, please. Don't I'm 100 percent sure he is. Oh, uh, I'm gonna be so upset. When he does, I'm gonna be. Yeah. Also, I'm 100 percent sure that girl at the end of this episode is the, uh, the pink-haired girl that was with uh, the overseers. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. She that she just to... magically disappeared now, like in this other girl with same hairstyle. Hair yeah, shows up in the she, game. Did, yeah. She, she probably probably just dyed her hair <laughs> brown and <it's> like <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm Marie. Nice right. to meet you. I'm not suspicious. Right. I'm like, with that American name, American ass name. No, <laughs> girl. Nope. You are the werewolf. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Imposter found. Mm. But I do like the premise of the game, though. Yeah, I like that it's really simplistic and, like, yet still has, like, a lot of room for people to fuck around with, like, yeah, changing like teams and stuff. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that I I'm I don't know this is this is weird I'm glad I'm kind of glad there's like a part where there's like no violence. We didn't just <laughs> the zippo just necessarily evolve into like a fucking battle royale. Yeah, it should though. Right, I, I, feel, I would. I feel like that was implemented because that's what happened in previous games. Like, oh yeah, people just start killing each other. Yeah, they got like killing each other. So everyone was like, mm. mm-hmm. can't, you can't have winners if they're all dead. Yeah. Can't we can't spread the word about this if all of our participants die? Uh but yeah. Um Yeah, but I think that's it. That's more or less the skinny about this week's episode of Tomodachi Game. It was really enjoyable. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked that the stops kept coming. Yes. Yes. Um alright, and that's the end of our weekly reviews. And for we are not doing waifu wars this week we're doing a filler arc y'all we're doing a filler arc Wee! i finally finished michiko and hachigan yo this was first of all i say it again this animation i need to see who animated this because they had no business being this good in, tw- in 2008 dean <laughs> wait what watch it be dean Oh, I thought you said it was the. I said, I said, I said, Nani, Nani said it? Um, da, 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 da. Manglobe. Oh, they sound familiar. Manglobe. Um, oh, damn. They they went bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. They you sound know, familiar. Right. You know what? That makes sense. Oh. I understand. I understand why they went bankrupt and why they're amazing. <laughs> They what? said there's such things as Samurai Shampoo, which going to Hodgkin, The World God Only Knows, mm-hmm. Dead Man Wonderland, <laughs> Hayate the Com- Combat Butler, I guess those are just an OVA, um, Samurai Flamenco, and Gangsta. Uh, um, yeah, no mega hits there. Well, so aside from Samurai Shampoo. Yeah, no mega hits. It was like hits. a different area. Different yeah. Area, so. No mega hits, but I know a lot of these. Like, that one of them was pretty popular. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I um, feel like these are all, like, cult classics, not necessarily, like, multi-million dollar right, franchises, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> I'm mean, like, these are all, well, the ones I named are all really good. Mm-hmm. Um... But they're not, and everyone's like <gasps> over them, right? Samurai Shampoo. I feel like I've seen all of it from start to end, and I still for I I can't tell you a single thing that happened. I remember they had a really good baseball episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. However, Michiko and Hotchkin was so amazing. First of all, I love. I love that it took place in Brazil. Oh my god. And it was like really 
like it had that flavor and this is coming from someone who i've watched like a lot of well not a lot i've watched like a few brazilian uh theme shows and movies you know ah uh, fuck i forget there's one movie that was really good i watched in college and of course for people who watch netflix the three percent which is mm-hmm. which is three percent is actually really good um excuse me but yeah like it wasn't just like we're in brazil and then everything's japanese like the the person who let me see michiko and hotchkin like the the person who made this i feel like they they must have they must have been like from brazil or had family from brazil or lived in brazil because this was this is very awesome and very specific. Like you have to do research to get this kind of experience, like to get like that mm-hmm. that kind of effect that they did to that point. Because they just they really just got down to like the rawness of Brazil, what it's, what it's like to you know growing up in the favelas. Um, the kids share up being gangsters, like. <laughs> That was a thing. Like, if if you were a kid and you got involved or not involved with riding the wrong people, they get you know they give these kids guns and they're like, go kill people. Like you're a murderer by the end age of like twelve. Um, because <laughs> and I say that because there's definitely a there's definitely an episode where like you know there's like a tragic end like a tragic ending for this girl who's trying to save her sister, at the mm-hmm. end. You know, she gets killed by this kid who was sent to go find her. You know, she was trying to make things right, but the kid being a kid, all he heard was his leader's orders was like, oh, nope, kill her on sight. If you see her, shoot her. And that's exactly what he did. And he was, like, no older than, like, 10. <laughs> like, he was, he was very young. So, you know... They they really had like that that crazy harsh reality, but it, it's not used as like a woe is me thing. They kind of just use it as like a plot point where they're just like have the time they're running from like gangsters and shit. There's a lot of gangs, a lot of gangs in this story. It's very gang gang heavy, which is cool. Um, and half the time the main characters. Um, oh so so basically the main premise is that. Michiko, which is like the tall black woman, mm. she is looking for her lover, um, Hiroshi More Hiroshi Morenos. <laughs> I love these names. <laughs> these names are ten out of ten. Um, but in and in order to find him, he finds out that um, this girl. Hana, aka Hotchkin, lives in this orphanage. So she essentially kidnaps that girl and she's like, hey, you're being treated pretty shitty at this, uh, at, at this home. You should just run away with me. And first she's like, no. <laughs> and then fucking her, the, her adopted father who took her in, tries to, like, kill her. <laughs> and just takes a gun and, like, shoots her. Oh, sorry, she doesn't shoot her. She tries to shoot her. There's a lot of plot armor, by the way, in this. Like, there's so many times that the main character should have been, like, killed, like, 50 times over. Um, But I don't care, because it's all cool action. It's just Michigo... Kick, kicking a bunch of people in the nuts. Like, she's super outspoken. Curses like a sailor. She's, like, su- even though she's, like, a woman, she's inc- still... You can still see she's incredibly immature. Oh, yeah, she broke out of prison in the first episode. She breaks out of prison, and then she looks for this girl to look for her lover, who's, like, went off the face of the earth. And then you kind of, like, follow in his trail and see where he's gone. Mm. Uh, but you follow that trail through um, the main characters, and then you kind of half the time they're kind of having to escape from like um, 
the impact that Hiroshi left behind. You know, in some cases, it's like, oh, this dude kind of, like, I worked with this dude, and then he kind of ran away and took all my money. And then some of them were like, yes, he also stole my money, and you're looking for him, so we're just going to kill you guys because Aura captured you because we think you're affiliated with him. <laughs> so it's like each episode, it's like, you don't know how you know she both fucked up now. There was one where he hooked up with this girl who was like, who found a way to like grow tomatoes and like had a whole, like she was a scientist and had like a whole farm for growing tomatoes. Apparently he had, he had a stint over there mm -hmm. and that was like a whole thing. You know, the girl that the, the scientist lady, she was like bisexual, like mix out, mix out with Hotchkin, not, no, oh, not Hotchkin. That's the girl. She makes, <laughs> that's the young lady. She mixed out with Michiko mm -hmm. and Michiko's like, what the fuck? And like, it, it, it's crazy. This anime is, this anime is wild. Gr it's just a great action show. Which the, and of course, obviously Hannah getting kidnapped by this girl to find Hiroshi. Of course, they kind of end up hating each other. You know, Hannah's she was brought up to be very polite, to be very hardworking. Like, she's like a good girl deep down. So in a lot of ways, she ends up being much more responsible than uh, than Michiko to the point where like she has a job while Michiko is just going out everywhere and <laughs> more more or less she, Michiko is also getting into trouble. Besides Hiroshi, she also just gets herself into trouble because she's you know she a bad bitch. <laughs> but I do like that it's not it's a struggle for them. Like, there's a lot of, like, these girls get fucked up <laughs> very often. Like, there's no, oh my god, I'm beautiful, so I can't be hurt. Like, Michigo, Michi, Michiko, Michiko, Michiko. There's some, there's like one scene where, like, these dudes just jump her and just, like, beat the shit out of her. Like, she literally has, like, a busted lip, black eye. Like, her ribs are fucked up, like... And that's not the first time that happens. Uh, so. Yeah. And I think the most. I get tell this is one of those stories where it's like. It's those stories where like. The, the journey is more important than the destination. Yeah, it sounds like a show that's like uh, more about the individual episode, like episodic. Because mm -hmm. eventually what happens at the end like you know they more or less realize it's like no they kind of they, they just grew to love each other like you know it, and, and it's not so much a mother daughter way it's just like caretaker caretaker kind of way they also care for each other you can just see how much and it's you know because at first Han Hana or aka Hachigo's main cons uh her main argument is like oh you're just using me so you can find Hiroshi you don't really care about me you're just using me so you can see your lover again by the way Hach uh, Hachikin isn't like she's not um Michiko's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else. Uh so but then as after a while you see how much Michiko is willing to like sacrifice herself, like literally risk her life to save Hana's. Not just for you know Hiroshi but mo but I would say at by the end of the se uh the season it's mostly for Hachikin. So you just see their uh, relationship like really bloom. That oh, they they think there's an episode where they take a picture of each other, mm. and it is the cutest. When I tell you like, that shit melted all eight layers of ice in my heart, so great. So yeah, 
Um, I can't, like, this anime was just so awesome. It has so much violence. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny moments. It, black people. Uh, like, I've never seen an anime that had this many black people in it in 2008. Like, hello? Because they easily could have just been like, her -der -der -der, it's Brazil, but we're just going to make y'all all, all kind of tannish. Tannish and white. But no, it was people of all skin types because that's what Brazil is. Like, I love that. It just, just felt so authentic. It, it was nowhere like some anime where they're like, oh, this is an episode with like, you know, talking about foreign people and they'll have like a cute little cutscene where it's just like a bunch of like people that look like, I don't know, a Nazi's wet dream all blue eyes and blonde <laughs> hair, aka America. Um... Or, or the West in general. That's how they just describe all the West. Um, so yeah, that was really dope. It's just the representation, uh, you know, the great. Like if you if you want something with a strong female cast, a thousand percent. This like the women are like, you know, they're strong, they're sexy. They're weak, they're vulnerable, like, they're badass, they're pitiful, they, yeah. This, this show covers, like, a lot, this show does a lot. Like, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's up there with the classics. At least for, like, the 2000s. Like, this, if you like 2000s anime, this is a must, this is a must-see. Oh my god, it's so good. The fact that the animation is so good now, like, mm -hmm. the animation they have there is good now. I feel like a lot of shows from the 2000s surprisingly have comparably good, ad like, some of them held up really well. Yes. For some reason. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, cl clearly, uh, <laughs> do you feel that way about Nanaha? No, <laughs> not, not the original Nana. No, no, no. <laughs> right? Well, are you are you saying you don't like everyone having the same fucking bang? Mm. Same, the oh. same. The, everyone having the same fucking bang. But anything by like Kyo Annie or Shaft still looks good today, mm. for the most part. Even stuff like super early on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, no, you said from me. you said from Kyo and Annie. Oh. Yeah, Kyo and Annie and Chef, not okay. Dean. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's say, hmm? mm -hmm. no, Fate State Night two thousand six does not look as good today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this was this is a really really good show. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna end my little rant slash review slash rave. I want me to go on Hotchkin. Please watch it um, wherever you watch your anime. They probably have it. Probably do, mm -hmm. considering how probably popular sure it is. Because I, I, like, um, yeah, also, yeah, because if you like, first of all, if you guys like Samurai Shampoo, it's like, it's it's that. It's giving Samurai mm -hmm. Shampoo um, slash Afro sh Samurai kind of kind of tea, slash, um, what was that anime that we were all excited to see, but it was actually bad? <laughs> um, I don't Forty Cody. No, 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 no. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I never, I never saw Forty Cody, so I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> no, the 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 Yasuke. Oh, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it's kind of like that animation. Except a little bit more style, like more stylistic, like you know, it has its own. It's more samurai shampoo, I would say. But yeah, that kind. Yeah, yeah. That that camp. But yeah. Okay. Now I'm done. I am done. We're done. Because <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will keep going for like a thousand more hours. And then how are we doing on time? Yep. Time to wrap this bitch up. Yep. Only oh, please take note, us away. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this episode of the G of the Wife of War podcast, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. See all the episodes as they go up every week. If you haven't already, do follow us over on Twitter, follow us on Twitch, and join the party on our Discord, all linked in the description down below. You can also subscribe to us on Patreon or become a channel member, like all these lovely people on screen right now who make the show possible. And Drew, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, 
Let me know in the comments below if you got this far. Let me know what's your favorite 2000s anime. Yes. Yes. Haruhi. Uh, but yeah, until not, not, next not, time. Not a, not a surprise. Yes. Until next time, this has been Sobroni and... Drewby-Doo. I'll catch y'all later. Later. Bye.